Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation on UHC and COVID-19 pandemic response in Kenya. We are pleased to be with you uh, at the 2020 HIRA International Symposium and Training course. My name is Jared Nyakiba. I'll be making this presentation with my colleague uh, Linda Makayoto and I will begin. So the outline for our presentation uh, today, a bit of a background, a bit of health system, then UHC, and then the COVID-19 uh, pandemic response. So background, uh, Kenya is a country in uh, East Africa, uh, one of the countries in East Africa, uh, around 580,000 uh, square kilometers. We have a population of 47.6 million people. Um, on UHC, uh, UHC is a key government agenda. Achieving UHC by 2030 is one of the four key priorities of government. Uh, the others are affordable housing, uh, food security, and uh, enhancing manufacturing. The COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we had our first case in March 2020. Uh, so far, we have 44,881 cases. We have 31,857 recoveries, and we have uh, 832 deaths so far as at uh, today, 18th of October, 2020. So the health system in Kenya, uh, we have several laws and policies guiding the health sector. There are a number of them, but to mention a few. So starting with the Constitution of Kenya, 2010, which gives health as a right for all Kenyans, and it aims to progressively provide the highest attainable standards of healthcare in Article 43. Then the Kenya Vision 2030, um, which recognizes health as a key pillar, as part of the social pillar for socioeconomic development and uh, high quality of life by 2030. Then the Health Act, this act uh, uh, enacted in 2017, provides for a unified uh, health system and enhanced regulation of the health system that would contribute towards achievement of UHC. Then the Health Policy 2014-2030, which provides the principles and focuses on achievement of this particular constitutional requirement and aspiration. Then the Kenya Health Sector Strategic Plan, 2018-2023, uh, uh, which provides a UHC roadmap for UHC. The other issue to mention is the UHC policy, which is in draft form. We are working on it. It is in development that will seek to bring all these various efforts of UHC together. This is, it's also important to note that uh, this is all linked to international agreements, international objectives, international goals, such as the SDG, in particular SDG3, which also aims for universal health coverage. So the health system in Kenya in terms of levels of care, healthcare is actually devolved in, in Kenya to the 47 county governments. So national level is responsible for policy, capacity building, technical assistance, um, the referral hospitals, emergencies, uh, supporting parastatals, uh, such as those in health insurance. We have a national health insurer, commodity supplies. We have a national medicine supply authority, uh, research and regulatory bodies, etc. County governments are responsible for health service delivery and management of, of, of the county health system. So in levels of care, we have six levels of care. We have the individual or community level, um, which is, provides community services and outreach uh, services. We have the primary care level, which is level two and three. Level two being dispensaries, level three being health centers. Then we have the referral level, which is level four, five, and six. So level four being a sub-county hospital or a district hospital uh, equivalent, level five being uh, a referral, uh, level, you know, regional referral hospital, and level six being a national referral hospital. 
So key to this is that you have a referral system, you have emergency preparedness and planning, and you have supervision and training um, across the levels. So an overview of UHC in Kenya, um, it is the aspiration that we have that all Kenyans have access to essential quality services without suffering financial hardship and leaving no one behind. Right, so it is important that Kenyans access essential quality services that they need without suffering financial catastrophe, uh, and therefore, and also moving together. So UHC is about the four A's of affordability, which is a financial protection issue, accessibility, which is an equity issue, services availability, actual availability, and then quality of services. If we achieve this, then we have high quality people-centered and integrated interventions. So the journey uh, for UHC, UHC is a journey, and Kenya has been on this journey for quite some time. Um, but for these purposes, we begin at the pilot, the UHC pilot uh, in four counties. So we did a one-year pilot in four pilot counties. This was mainly through input financing, provision of inputs, human resources, and essential medicines, etc., as per an agreement between county and national. So uh, that was a one-year pilot. So these lessons from the pilot counties were then scaled up to all the counties uh, through, again, input-based financing for health products and technologies, human resources, basic equipment, etc. Uh, again, through an agreement and a conditional framework. Uh, for, for for this. Now we are in a transition period uh, where we are having both input and output based financing. So we have a defined essential health benefit package. Um, we have uh, the operationalization and the strengthening of primary health care. The long term uh, aspiration is to move to a social health insurance uh, model in which we have a reformed national health insurer as a main strategic purchaser from health facilities. So this would be an output outcome-based financing. So a few of the pilot uh, lessons learned from the pilot. Uh, so when it comes to human resources, we have or we had significant human resource for health gaps in the system. Uh, and therefore need to mitigate by recruiting critical staff. And then we need to also work on outreach services for specialist services. Community health services uh, were not fully operational across these counties, and therefore there's a need to establish these units for 100% coverage. Primary health care, there is need to strengthen the primary health care service delivery approach. Uh, and one of the ways is to link level one, two, and three facilities in a network uh, referred to as a primary care network to a level four facility. Referral system was not optimal uh, and this led to overcrowding at the higher levels uh, and therefore prolonged waiting time. So therefore we need to discourage self-referral, we need to set up uh, gatekeeping mechanisms and again we need to strengthen primary care levels. Service delivery, um, there were significant unmet needs for services uh, for example, service utilization increased by average 20% in 2019 uh, compared to the previous year. And therefore, again, there is a need to strengthen primary care so that access is enhanced. When it comes to health products and technologies, there were significant uh, issues around availability, lack of standardization, and a limited range of products and delivery times by the um, medical supplies agency, Kenya Medical Supplies Agency. So we need to employ more and more of open systems and we need to strengthen uh, the operations of this uh, medical supplies agency. When it comes to health information and uh, M&E, information flow was fragmented, incomplete, not timely, uh, and therefore there is a need to in strengthen this function and to invest in ICT and infrastructure. Financial flow, flow of funds to health facilities was a bit inconsistent and inadequate for effective service delivery. And therefore, there's a need to employ a model that would allow not just timely, but also uh, effective fund uh, disbursement. Governance and leadership 
sectoral engagements and coordination structures were not very optimal, and therefore there's a need to enhance this as well. So these lessons have led to focus areas for the national scale-up of UHC. Uh, these are through mainly a primary care uh, approach, primary health care approach. So a focus on primary health care services, uh, refocusing on the you know, enhanced coordination and integration, community health services in terms of setting up of the community health units, health system strengthening in terms of recruitment of critical health workers, and uh, provision of essential medicines, uh, etc., financing reforms, and then public health services such as disease surveillance and response, specialized services also in terms of outreach services, in terms of training of specialists for enhanced availability, but also in terms of referral and gatekeeping mechanisms. So an update of where we are now. Um, so one on the UHC policy, Development of this is ongoing. We have already had a draft and engaged stakeholders. Next is to validate this policy. Step number two is uh, essential health benefits package. The benefit package was designed by an expert panel, um, rationalized, and now operationalization of how to start uh, has been done together with the national insurer, which is the National Hospital Insurance Fund. And we want to begin with the identification of indigent households, very poor households, one million of them. Uh, and this is about to begin. We have developed a tool. Uh, the process is there. So we are just about to start identifying these indigent households. Intergovernmental participatory agreements um, with the 47 county governments, the signing of this and the condition of framework for each financial year, which is county, is very important. And this details roles and responsibilities. So this is also about to be uh, finalized. Primary healthcare, we have several policies that have been launched uh, that set out uh, the, the operation of primary healthcare. So one is a primary healthcare framework, um, the emergency medical policy, and the community health policy. All of them launched in 2020. These are very key. Then the training of new uh, community health volunteers to bridge the gap that was there of 31,000. 30,000 of these have already been trained. When it comes to the existing uh, community health volunteers, their retraining on UHC, on COVID, etc. Uh, this is also almost at 60,000 out of 61,000. So now we have almost 100% coverage of community health volunteers. We just need them set up in units. Sensitization of health workers and the public on UHC. So these plans are in place to sensitize the county teams on UHC, health professional association, and the public. So we have a communication strategy that will be key towards this. Human resources for health, recruitment of staff is ongoing. Um, internship policy and the human resource for health strategy in terms of how we deploy and use our human resources for health who are endorsed. And then the issue around sustainable training of specialists. Uh, this, this development of a framework or a guideline around this is ongoing. Um, essential medicines and medical supplies and basic equipment. The National Medicines Therapeutics Committee was set up. Next, we need to now set up the county level of this committee. Uh, and this is ongoing. These committees will work on implementing the recently finalized essential medicines list and the Kenya Essential Medical Supplies list and Kenya Essential Medical Lab list, which are about to be finalized. The development of clinical guidelines by this committee is also ongoing. We have a health products and technologies grant to counties providers are provided as drawing rights at KEMSA. Uh, and this is ongoing. All counties have accessed uh, this grant and uh, made their orders and uh, received their supplies. County quantification of needs is also ongoing. Um, then uh, basic equipment was quantified and specs developed. So we are looking at how to do this. So when it comes to the assessments, monitoring and evaluation, we have the Kenya Health Facility Assessment uh, of 2019, which gives us a baseline for UHC. 
We have COVID assessments that have been ongoing. We have UHC county readiness assessment that has also been ongoing. That also gives us a picture of where we, we are in terms of readiness to, to roll out. And we also have the Kenya Health Sector Strategic Plan, which gives the roadmap, as I said, for UHC. And it now provides the m and framework also of how this will be monitored moving forward. When it comes to quality of care, we have a paradigm shift in how we inspect, how we register, how we license, how we incentivize quality improvement. This is enshrined in the National Certification Framework for Health Facilities, which was launched in 2020. So this is also being uh, implemented. Uh, then we also have the joint health inspections of all facilities on a regular basis. Uh, this is also ongoing as a regulatory function. Then the Kenya Quality Model for Health uh, is a tool for quality improvement uh, for facilities for counties and nationally, and this is also ongoing. Lastly, we have the enabling sectors that are not the main health sector, but they have an impact on the health sector in terms of provision of services. So ICT with fiber optic connection and local area network the National Treasury in terms of financing reforms and financing, water, the Ministry of Water uh, in terms of connecting facilities to adequate, safe water, uh, whether borehole storage or connection to the piped water, Ministry of Energy in terms of connection to the national grid or solar, and the Ministry of Roads uh, and the associated agencies. So this is key and it highlights that UHC is also uh, multi-sectoral uh, in nature. So this is also ongoing. So I will stop there and uh, hand over to my colleague for the next section of the presentation. Thank you very much.